Welcome back to Control Systems Lectures. We continue with modeling in the frequency domain. This time around, we'll be looking at electrical systems. In the previous lectures, we've looked at mechanical systems. We looked at translational mechanical systems, rotational, rotational mechanical systems, and gear systems. And so what we'll be looking at in this class is the electrical networks to bring together both the electrical networks and also with your knowledge of mechanical system, we will then move on to look at electromechanical systems. So let's consider electrical networks. These are the components that make up electrical systems. The guiding principle is the Kirchhoff's laws, which we have two of them. One of them is based on the current that states that the current law states that the sum of the currents flowing into a junction, that is into a node, equals the sum of the currents flowing out of a junction or a node. And the second one relates to the voltage. And uh, the voltage law states that around any closed loop in an electrical circuit, the sum of the voltage rise must equal the sum of the voltage falls. Or in any closed loop network, the total voltage up around the loop is equal to the sum of all the voltage drops within the same loop. So these are the two guiding principles or the laws for electrical networks. We have different uh, three basic um, elements, the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. And if we take the voltage current relationship for resistor, the voltage is the resistance multiplied by the current. And if you take the Laplace transform of this, this will give you V of S, which is equal to R, I of S. And the impedance for the resistor is R. And then if you look at the inductor, this is the equation for the inductor that relates the voltage and the current. If you take the Laplace transform of this equation, you will have V of S is equal to LS I of S. And the impedance will be then LS. Then we look at the capacitor and the equation for the capacitor is given by this equation. Uh, relating the voltage and the current. And if you take the Laplace transform of this equation, you will get a Vs is equal to 1 over Cs, Is, and the impedance will be 1 over Cs. Again, there is another property called the admittance. And the admittance is the inverse of the impedance. So you can see that the impedance for the resistor is R and the admittance is 1 over R. And so it goes on that this admittance is the um, inverse of impedance. Now we can look at the current voltage relationship. We've looked at the voltage current relationship, which are these relationships that we've looked at. Now, if you look at the current voltage, which means we want to make the current on this side subject of the formula in this case you will have the current will be equal to 1 over rv of t and for the inductor the current will be l integral v voltage dt and then for the capacitor the, the current will be given as a capacitance and a differential of the voltage so this is called the voltage current relationship now we can also have the voltage charge relationship, knowing that current is the differential of the charge. So a charge given by Q. So if you now replace wherever we have I, we can replace it by dQ dt. And so for the resistor, this is the voltage current relationship. And this will be the voltage charge relationship. So all we need to do is to replace our current with the charge. The same thing happens for the inductor. You replace your current with the charge and you have this relationship. And if you do the same for the capacitor, you will have this relationship. So these are the voltage charge relationship or relationships. Then we need to familiarize ourselves with the symbols used and the units. For voltage, the symbol is V and the unit is volt. For 
current which is i we have the unit is amperes and the unit is represented by a for charge it is q which is column for capacitance it is f which is farads for resistance is omega which is ohms and then for inductance is h which is henry so these are the units of these electrical systems and their symbols so let's look at this simple electrical network so the question is find a transfer function if the voltage vt which is now the input voltage um if vt is the input voltage and vc that's the voltage across the capacitor is the output voltage so we have to find the transfer function for this system step one you take the sum of the voltages around the loop so if you take the sum of the voltages around this loop you will have over the inductance l di dt plus ri plus 1 over c 0 to t i t dt which is the so this is the voltage across the capacitor this is the voltage across the resistor and this is the voltage across the inductance and this is equals to so these voltages will be equals to the applied voltage based on uh, the Kirchhoff's law and so second step you change the variable from current to charge now remember that we looking for a relationship between vc and v and here we have the v quite all right but we do not have a vc so first we change this variable in place of i we use a charge and this will now be the equation using the charge you have charge in place of i and you have this equation then the third step is you introduce the desired state variable which is vc now qt is equals to c vct so from charge we are able to find the relationship between our vc and charge and so in place of charge now in this equation we will replace it with c vct which is the the, the state variable that we are interested in so that we can have vc and vt and then we can find our transfer function so by substituting this into this equation we arrive at this equation and you can see that vct is there vct vct is on this side of the equation and hence we can take the laplace transform of this last equation which will be lc this d2 square will be s square vc so this will give us lc s square plus rcs plus one everything multiplied by vc will bring out the vc out of the bracket and this will be equals to v of s and so now we can find a transfer function which is vc of s over vs which is equals to from this equation one over lc over s square plus r over ls plus one over lc we decided to make the equation in this form um, where you can see that uh, you have s square s and uh, a constant here so this is a transfer function for this simple network um, after solving we yield the transfer function and then if you now draw the block diagram you will arrive at this block diagram where this is your transfer function you have vc which is the input uh, v of s which is the input and the vc which is your output We will use a simplified process now to solve for the impedances using the impedances for the same electrical circuit that we've just solved. And the first step is you convert the original circuit from the time domain to the frequency domain, which is the Laplace transformed by taking the Laplace transform of the elements. So this is the system that we have in the time domain. When we transform this into the Laplace trans domain, we will replace in place of L, what we have is the impedances. So this, the impedance of the inductance will be LS. The impedance for the resistor will be R. The impedance for the capacitor will be 1 over CS. And we have the transformed input voltage, the transformed current that is flowing through the, the loop, and the transformed voltage across the capacitor. 
So the same problem, but now what we've done is to we take the circuit in the time domain and Laplace transform it into the frequency domain. Step two is replace the component values with the impedance values, which is what we have done. And then from this Laplace transform system, you can now see that all you do is to add up all the impedances LS plus R plus 1 over CS, multiply that by the current that is flowing through the loop. This will be equals to the input um, voltage. So sum of impedances multiplied by the current flowing through the loop is equal to the sum of applied voltage. But we know that VC is also I of S 1 over CS, right? So I of S from this equation is CS VC of S. So if we replace our I S with CS VC of S, then we've introduced the variable that we're interested here, which is the VC. And substituting this into this equation, we arrive at the equation. And from this equation, we can then write our transfer function, which is VC of S over VS, which is equal to 1 over LC over S squared plus R over LS plus 1 over LC, same thing as before. It's just that this is more simplified and more um, straightforward because you just transform your circuit to, uh, into the frequency domain and the rest is fairly straightforward. Now you can have complex circuits which we are going to introduce using the mesh method. There is another method called the Northern method. It's in your textbook. You can go through that. Uh, in this class, I'll just illustrate using the mesh analysis. So the first step is you replace all sources and time variables with their Laplace transform. Sources mean inputs. And, um, and then you transform to the Laplace transform. Second step is you replace passive element values with their impedances, just like we've just done. Then you assume a transform circuit and a current direction in each mesh. So each mesh, you need to know the current direction. Then you write your creature's voltage law around each mesh. And then you solve the simultaneous equations for the output and form the transfer function. So now let's see how this works. So this is a complex system because we have two loops uh, instead of one, like in the previous case. So what do we say is the first step? Transform the, the mesh into a Laplace transform. So we reflect now the impedances, R1, R2, LS, 1 over CS. All the impedances are, are indicated and Mesh 1, this is the flow of the current, and Mesh 2, this is the flow of our current. Then we take each mesh and we, we write out the equation. So we take Mesh 1, for example. So the total voltage drop will be R1 plus LS I1S. Because this there is a current on the other side of LS, we have to subtract LS i2 and this will be equals to the applied voltage so this is the first equation using the first mesh and then again we take the second mesh and here you can see we have r2 ls plus 1 over cs multiplied by i2 that is the current flowing through there well because we have current on the other side we have to subtract ls ls I1 of S, and since there is no applied voltage on this side, this will be equals to zero. So we have equation one for the for mesh one and equation two for mesh two. These are the two equations. We can then cast these two equations into a matrix form, noting that IS and I2 are the unknowns. So we have the equation, these two equations. Uh, R1 plus LS, which is for I1, and uh, minus LS, which is I1. So we have the I1s, and then the ones with the I2, LS, I2 minus LS, and then we have R2 plus LS plus 1 over CS, all of these with I2S. So this is in the matrix form, and this will be equals to VS and 0. Now, once we have it in this form, we can use the Kramer's rule 
or any other applicable rule to solve for the transfer function. So the transfer function will be the I2 over V of S. So the output over the input. And if you use the Kramer's rules, you know how to do that um, from previous examples. And also you probably did this in mathematics. And this will come up to this equation. Note that this denominator is the determinant of this matrix, which is uh, this multiplied by that across minus LS minus uh, multiplied by LS. So this, if you do the Kramer's method, it will give you this um, transfer function. Okay, so this is the end of lecture 207. And next we're going to see how we're going to combine a mechanical and electrical system to develop an electromechanical system. Thank you very much.